Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> oh, good reference. Right. I'm Justin McElroy. This is Rush Fresh Deck. You're at Polygon. And uh, we're going to talk to Mike McCorder, not about Metal Gear, because that's where that <laughs> reference was from. Yeah, I deep think. cut. Deep cut, but about Death Stranding. Mike McCorder, welcome to the, the video. The show. <laughs> welcome to yeah. the web video, Mike. Hi, boys. Thanks for having me on your internet television show. We're going to break it down real simple for you, Mike. What okay, the ahead. hell is this game? What are we looking at? Oh, I at? don't know. Yeah, I, 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 the more interesting question to me is, does Kojima know? <laughs> I think he knows it's going to be an action game. Um, I don't think he knows a whole hell of a lot more than that. Uh, that thing that we saw at E3 at Sony's press conference, he says was just a experiment, a test, uh, to kind of show off the kind of uh, ideas and the, the technical capabilities of the engine that they're working with. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, it's an action game. It's got Norman Reedus, and uh, he's going to go back to, uh, I don't know, some whale shit. He loves whales. We, we just posted an article about how much he loves whales. Yeah, don't go read that yet, though. I know you're intrigued, but wait until we finish the video here, uh, because we are doing this live uh, on Facebook.com. Uh, slash polygon so if you uh want to watch us there you can ask questions if you're watching this live afterwards it will do no good but feel free to post your questions anyway uh put them in the comments and we will uh read them and ask them of mike mccorder uh mike so are you telling me and and i and again i know there's a lot of question marks here but uh the, the what we saw may actually have no bearing on the the final product that maybe it's just kind of like a mood mood piece to sort of set the table like or? are we gonna meet this baby What's up with the baby? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I didn't ask the name of the baby or anything like that. Uh, I, I don't really know what's going on with it. it you know, he, I asked him if this was going to be a teaser that we could play at some point because, you know, he's fond of those things. Uh, he said, no, that wasn't the case. Um, but, you know, he, I also tried to ask him about how many people work at Kojima Productions at this point. He wouldn't say how many people are there now, you know, he said in December there were just the four of them. He said that they're doing interviews every day, hiring people, uh, bringing in uh, international recruits. Uh, so it sounds like they're still doing a lot of building there. Um, he even said that they haven't settled on the, the, the hardware or the uh, software that they're going to use to make their game, uh, but they have to make a decision soon. Um, so what yeah. are we seeing? I mean, like so why, what, so why, why show off their their tech if they don't know if, if it's going to be nine years until this game comes well, out? Well, no, what? but like, why even if that's not the engine? Why talk right. about that it's rendered in engine? Like, who, right? Like, what, what engine, engine? is that? <laughs> I don't know. He said that they had kind of uh, settled between two strong candidates, and uh, one of the strong, <laughs> one of the strong half candidates. Half of that video was made in one, and the other half of the video was made in the other, and they're <laughs> just going to see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's hard. You know, he's it's a, a relatively young studio, right? And I mean, just it's like four up. months old, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Did he tell yeah. anything about yeah. themes? Anything that he he's like interested in right now? Beyond that, Wales. Beyond Wales that he might want to bring into the game. Uh, no, he didn't really talk too much about themes. He was pretty cagey about a, a lot of that. Um, I couldn't really I couldn't really get an impression from him whether some of his. Uh, PT Silent Hills uh, themes we're going to carry over. Um, well, yeah, I mean, this may be uh, some direction here, this uh, this quote that he had up at the front of his trailer. but Yeah, um, a lot of people, you have, uh, that quote is often talked about in terms of mindfulness. Like, yes. uh, and so I don't know if this is a game about meditation. I would be so into that if so, but probably not. Um, the, was this a hard interview to do, Mike? It sounds like there might have been some uh, awkward silences while you waited for him to continue with his answers. <laughs> to not say anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it, it wasn't an awkward interview. I mean, he, you know, he, we did talk about uh, kind of his philosophy and, and kind of teasing fans and, and leaving little hints and uh, clues and things. So, I, I, you know, I don't think that he did this for no reason. Um, and I actually talked to him... Uh, and his producer, uh, Ken Imazumi, before we did the proper interview. And I said, hey, maybe let's, um, let's maybe watch the trailer and, and kind of go through it and talk about it. Maybe you can do a little director's commentary. He said, uh, one, they wanted to propose the idea that we do that and then not publish it for weeks or months. 
because he wanted fans to kind of dissect this thing. Did you and do that? No, we didn't do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I think he was he was hesitant to give too much away. I think he wants fans to kind of you know you know pick at this thing and, and see if they can figure out what it is. Uh, Even before, before Kojima does, you'll beat Kojima to the punch. <laughs> yeah, you figure out what it is. Please really let great me know what you think it might be in as much detail as possible. We're really trying super hard over here. Yeah, and a release in there if you could. That all emails sent to us will become property of Kojima Productions. <laughs> Uh, Did he speak to like how long this idea has been germinating for him? Yeah, is this a long time thing? No, I think it's actually a, a relatively young thing. Um, so you know, but but we also don't really know uh, where how far Silent Hills went, right? We didn't we don't really know how how deep into production that actually got. So uh, you know, maybe these are are, are themes that. Uh, that have been around for a while, but uh, I think given the um, contractual situation with Konami, uh, he can't really say if this is something that's been with him for a long time or it relates to some of his older work. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's going to have to say that they started fresh with new ideas. And uh, yeah, uh, hey, I, you know, even after talking to the guy for a half an hour, I think I know just about as much as the, about this game as you guys do. <laughs> Did you talk at all about the relationship between him and Norman Reedus, like where, where that was after Silent Hill and how that relationship sort of uh, was maintained in between? Yeah, he, he actually did touch on that. He, uh, he said that, you know, he was in contact with uh, Reedus uh, throughout the whole debacle at uh, Konami uh, and PT and Silent Hills. And he said that, um, you know, that they're really good friends and that, that uh, Redis reached out to him to make sure that he was OK. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I think that as soon as he got out of his um, contract at Konami, they just started working together right away. And I, I think that that's been a, you know, I think those guys have had a relationship for like close to three or four years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't think it I don't think it affected it in any way based on what he said during our interview today. But he. Um, you know, I, I, I think that those guys are going to work together for a long while. You know, he seems to establish those relationships with people. Um, you know, Mark Cerny, Kyle Cooper, uh, you know, Yoji Shinkawa. These are people that he's worked with for a long time and is, I think, is going to continue to do that. You know, he brought, he brought the core, most recognizable people from Kojima Productions over because I think that there's a circle of trust there. Uh, and that is one thing that he's, he did say about Redis is that... Um, that he trusts Kojima to, to give him good work. Yeah, Which I don't is, know if yeah. knew that he was going to, you know, show his his naked buttocks. Sure. In the, Th in does the, he know the, that he might have to read Kojima written dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> I think he knows what he's getting himself into. Uh, I did want to ask one more question. It might not have come up, but did he speak to Resident Evil 7 at all? Obviously, it seemed like that was very inspired by what he was doing with PT. Yeah, actually, we did talk about it briefly. He said that he's seen it. He hasn't played it. Um, but he sounded very interested in it. He actually was like, you know, threw it back at me. He's like, hey, what did you think of it? Is it any good? Um, and I, and I said, yes, it was. And, and uh, you know, it, it seems pretty clear that there's uh, at least some influence drawn from uh, the stuff that he was working on there. You know, I don't think that as a, as a creator he's going to say that they were the primary influence on that game. Uh, there has been some discussion about at least one Koji Pro person going over to Capcom to right. work on that game. Yeah. Um, but we did talk a little bit about uh, VR uh, after that conversation, and he said that he's really interested in VR mm. uh, for for some of the the uh, horror um, components that it can that it can really add to. So uh, I would not be surprised if we see him, given his relationship with Sony and their push to get PlayStation VR content up, uh, to do something in that space. Great, cool. Um, and uh, had he settled on the pre-order bonuses yet? Could you tell, or was that not? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe there's a, uh, I, I, you know, I could probably follow up and see if there's a Norman Reedus um, body pillow. Uh, sure, I love that. that. Yeah, that might be offered. Yeah. A sleeping bag, you like climb out of his stomach. Uh, actually, before we go, let like, you go, Mike. You're a longtime Kojima fan. Do you like this sort of thing? I mean, do you like this this stage in the like in the, the outrageous? Kojima, what the, the hell is going on? This stage, stage in the Kojima cycle. <laughs> like, just are you a fan of this, or do you just want more? 
I, I yeah no I give me more of this the, I, I love it when it's really interesting and smart and I also love it when it's really dumb so when he <laughs> comes up with this you know like his theme I'll keep coming is is I think pretty ill advised but <laughs> he's got a reason for it you know and I appreciate I that I bet he does I bet <laughs> he does <laughs> yep. so, Amen circle of life uh, yeah uh, that that uh, is gonna do it for us uh, Mike McCorder first off thank you so much thank for joining you very us. Much. Stay safe Thanks, out there Bob. and don't work yourself too hard. Thanks to you at home for, for watching along. Uh, we got a lot more at Polygon.com, YouTube.com slash Polygon, Facebook.com slash Polygon. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a ton more. So uh, make sure you, you go consume all of that uh, video game media. Uh, but for uh, Russ Freshdick, I'm me. Justin McElroy. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again real soon.